What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now then, I have not long removed the intake manifold off my BMW N47 engine. And the N47 engine is pretty much the same design as the N57 engine. The N47 is the 2 litre diesel, the N57 is the 3 litre diesel. And therefore, the intake manifold pretty much shares the same design. And after removing the intake manifold, I got a whole bunch of comments regarding the swill flaps. Asking, am I going to keep them in place? Am I going to remove them? So in this video, I thought it would be a good opportunity to explain what I'm going to be doing next and the reasonings behind it. Okay, so first of all, I think it would be a good idea to explain exactly how these swill flaps work. So at the end, there is a lever. Now bear in mind this is controlled by an actuator which bolts on with these three bolt holes here. But the actuator essentially just turns this lever here. And that just turns like that. And in turn, that lever opens and closes the swill flaps. So as you can see, they're wide open. And right there, they are completely closed. Now as you will see, there are only four swill flaps but you'll see there are eight intake ports now that is because at low air velocity at low rpm the swill flaps will pretty much remain closed but as the rpms increase as the boost increases the swill flaps will open now the reasoning behind this is that with these ports blocked off with the swill flaps the air will then be forced to enter through these ports. And with the air having to come from these intake ports, the air is actually forced round into the cylinder head as opposed to just tumbling into the cylinder head. It's forced round and that's where you get the swirling effect. Now I'll actually put a diagram up now to better explain the swirling process. But essentially what happens is with the air swirling round into the cylinder, you get more air but if the air was to tumble in so let's say for example if these swirl flaps were not in place the air would just tumble out of here into the cylinder and then you would get less cycles of air coming in so you'd, you'd basically get less air so essentially the reason that the swirl flaps are in place is to get more air in at a lower rpm now how big of a difference would it make if the swirl flaps were not in place you may ask now I can actually talk from experience because I've done it before. I've completely removed the swirl flaps. I've taken the rod out and I've put in the bung in the end. And I actually notice a big significant difference. I noticed around five MPG loss on average. And I just felt that I had next to no power below 2000 RPM. And that is obviously what these are designed to do. They're designed to give you more torque and efficiency down in the low rpms now that doesn't mean that you should definitely not remove these it's different with every intake manifold now on previous generations let's say the m47 and the m57 these swirl flaps were held in place by screws that's obviously not the case here these are plastic the swirl flaps and they're held in by a single rod so the swirl flaps themselves cannot fall off. The only way that the swirl flaps could fall off and fall into your engine and potentially cause catastrophic engine failure is if the rod itself fails. Now you may be asking, how can the rod itself fail? So the rod that goes the entire length of the intake manifold is actually made out of brass and brass is a soft metal. And so with vibrations, with movement over time, it can wear. And generally what happens is the intake manifold gets full of soot from the EGR. The swirl flaps themselves, they get covered in a sooty carbon mess. And what happens is the rod comes loose. It keeps vibrating over time and eventually snaps. And then the swirl flaps will fall into your engine. Now the best thing you can do to prevent this obviously is to remove your EGR and clean out your intake manifold and then you should check what the condition of your rod is in. Has it got too much wear? And as I can see, this rod hasn't got too much wear. 
It's got a little bit of movement, but that's not excessive. That is okay. This is going to be good for at least another 100,000 miles. Now, what do you do if you notice that your rod is worn and it's pretty close to snapping? Now, you have two options. So, you can remove the swivel flaps and the rod themselves, or you can go ahead and buy a brand new intake manifold from BMW. Now, that is going to cost you around £600 or around $800, but it means that you then have a brand new, clean, fully functioning, as it should, intake manifold. And you know what to expect if you remove the swirl flaps, you will lose some low down torque and you will lose some MPGs. Okay then, so if you haven't already figured, I will not be removing the swirl flaps on my intake manifold. Now, if I had the earlier M47 or M57 engine, I would straight away remove the swirl flaps. You cannot risk a screw coming undone due to vibrations and the swirl flaps falling into your engine. Obviously, this is a later design. It's a much better design, but if you are thinking of doing this yourself, then simply just remove your intake manifold, check what the condition of the rod is like. If the rod is very loose and you think it is close to snapping, then make the decision whether or not you want to completely remove them or not, or possibly go down the route of buying a new intake manifold. Okay then, so I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you have learned something. Please give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already done so, because I've got so many more BMW videos to come, and I'll see you guys in that next video. Peace!